semper virgo, Felix Cedi porta. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. So he who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. morning. Well, you know, today is the exaltation of the Holy Cross. This feast goes all the way back to the year 326. St. Helena. Who's St. Helena? Anybody know? The mother of Constantine, the emperor Constantine. Uh, she wanted to go to Jerusalem to find the holy places of Christ. And so she went, and then when she went there, she found this pagan temple dedicated to the goddess Aphrodite. And over that temple, that temple was built over the Savior's tomb. And so she raised the temple, leveled it to the ground, and the workers began to excavate and as they did so, as the story goes, they found three crosses. Well, they assumed that one of these crosses belongs to Jesus. And they found out one of the crosses, when it touched a dying woman, she was instantly made well. And so the veneration of the cross began centuries ago. Her son Constantine built a church right there called the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre. That church has been destroyed several times, but over the same spot is another church today in Jerusalem called the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And they took the cross and they put it in a silver container, and they decided to expose it for adoration, for veneration. And according to an eyewitness, centuries and centuries and centuries ago, the Christians came forward, they venerated the cross, they knelt, they touched the cross with their foreheads, they touched the cross with their eyes, they touched the inscription, this is Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews, then they kissed the cross. And the uh, author says, and then they moved on. The beginning of the veneration of the Holy Cross. And that's the difference between today and Good Friday. Good Friday, we really focus in on the passion and crucifixion of Jesus. But today, we celebrate and lift up the cross itself. Now, what is the cross, really? It's God's mercy. The cross is mercy. And what is mercy? I think we've all experienced it. If you haven't, you better. Mercy, here's a definition of mercy. Compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it, is, whom it is within one's power to punish and harm. Compassion and forgiveness shown to someone by someone who can punish and harm you rightfully. And that's God. God has what's called just justice. And what is God's justice? God's justice is nothing but uh, his righteous judgment. It's a righteous judgment to correct sin. And so this goes back, uh, there's a prayer today that is the prayer of the cross. 
and it goes back to Sister Faustina. Yesterday, uh, in, in, on De uh, September 13, 1935, Sister Faustina, who John Paul canonized as the first saint of the new millennium, she was in Vigno in her house where her sisters were, and she had a vision, and it was of a mighty angel. And this angel was glorious in dazzling robes. His face was brilliant. He was glorious. And he was standing on a cloud, and these thunderbolts and lightnings were coming into his hands, and he was about to strike the earth in a certain place with them, God's justice to a certain place. And she began to plead. But he, she said her pleas uh, were like nothing in the face of the divine wrath. But then she said she felt the grace of Jesus Christ within her soul. And she was caught up to the throne of God before the Trinity. And she uttered this prayer. Eternal Father, I offer to you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And in, that was the first time she said that prayer. And the angel became powerless. He couldn't do a thing. The vision ended. And the next day she was coming into the chapel and Jesus said, I want you every time you come into the chapel to immediately say that prayer that I taught you, he said. And you know that prayer is very powerful because it's a prayer that helps to alleviate the judgment of God. It brings God's mercy. We are living in the time of mercy, and so John Paul said, we need to canonize Sister Faustina. We're going to make it the first saint of the new millennium, signifying that this is what God wants. He wants the message of his mercy to go out into the whole world. And what kind of mercy is it? My mother was dying. I knew she was dying, and I went to see her. We all went to see her. But one night after I had seen her, I went back to my parish. I was the pastor up at St. Joe's in Lincoln. And early in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, I'm in bed. I'm just kind of like, you know how you're kind of like in a, in, yeah, a little wake, a little, I hear, get up. And then I hear, get up and pray for your mother. Just like that. Wasn't that loud. <laughs> And so I know that's my guardian angel. You know, we all have a guardian angel. We do. Sometimes I, you know, this happens, you know, a number of times. And sometimes I don't listen. You know what happens? I've learned, you better listen. <laughs> you better listen. And so I got up, and I didn't know that my mother was dying that night. I didn't know. But I went over to the church. I unlocked the church. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. It's dark. I go before the tabernacle. I kneel down, and before Jesus, I pray my brains out. I pray like I've never prayed before. And I just pray the whole time for my mother. And then it became time for me to celebrate Mass. The, the, the sun came up. I had to go back to the rectory. We were going to have Mass in a little bit. People were going to come into the church. So I went back to the rectory, and there's the phone is blinking. So I pick up the phone. It's my sister. She says, uh, call me. So I look at my wife. Well, I have time to, I have time to call. So I call her. She goes, Ma just died. But you know what? When she told me that, I was at complete peace. Complete peace because God gave me a sense of peace at the end of that prayer. When I was going back, I felt total peace. And I knew when Ma, when my sister said Ma just died, I prayed for her right at her last minutes. I was told to pray for her, and I know she died peacefully. You know, Sister Faustina, uh, in the message, 
She says, God's mercy sometimes takes a sinner at the last moment in a wondrous and mysterious way. You know, sometimes we can live our lives, we don't go to church, we never pray, we forget about God completely. We really do. We don't raise our family in the faith. We live completely as if there's no heaven or hell. We do that all the time. And we do whatever we want. And we're not really sorry. And then you know what? It's time to die. All right. And then the rubber hits the road. We have a soul. Everybody has a soul. And that soul is immortal, immediately created by God, immortal. And when we die, the soul is separated from its body, but it's ultimately destined to go back to the body in the resurrection. But that soul was made for God. And so when a person begins to die, the devil's there, your guardian angel's there, and what's going to happen? God's mercy sometimes take a, takes a sinner at the last moment in a wondrous and mysterious way. Outwardly, it seems as if everything is lost, but it's not soul. The soul, illumined by a ray of God's powerful final grace, the final grace, turns to God in the last moment with such a powerful love that in an instant it receives from God absolution of sins and remission of any punishment due to them. While outwardly, outwardly it shows no sign of repentance or contrition because the soul at that stage no longer reacts to external things. But it's going, it's alive, it's immortal. And so Jesus said to Sister Faustina, my daughter, help me to save a certain dying sinner. Save this chaplet that I have taught you for him. And so she said, when I began to save the chaplet, all of a sudden I saw the man. He was in the midst of a terrible torment and struggle. His guardian angel was defending him, but he was, as it were, powerless against the enormity of the misery of this man's soul. He was in such misery, his soul, that even his guardian angel was felt powerless. And a multitude of devils were waiting for him. And so while I was saying the chaplet, she said, I saw Jesus all of a sudden as he is depicted in the image with his hand blessing and the rays coming out from his heart. She said the rays that issued from Jesus' heart enveloped the dying man and the powers of darkness fled in panic and the, and the sick man peacefully breathed his last. Mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. God is just. And by right, we are sinners. And sometimes we sin grievously. And sometimes we don't even care. We hurt other people. God is just. But you know what? His nature is love. And he's also merciful. And the cross, this prayer, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, where did that offering take place? Where was it offered? On the cross. It's a prayer of the cross. And the cross is mercy. It's mercy. And so as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us remember the mercy that God has no matter what we've done, no matter how bad we've been, no matter what sins we've committed or failed to do, no matter how hardened we might have become, Jesus loves us and wants us to know his mercy. He wants it. That's what he wants. He wants, for God so loved the world, he gave his son not to condemn it, 
but to save it. Save it. The cross is the instrument of our salvation. Through the cross, as the scripture says, the devil has been defeated and life has been restored. Through the cross, scripture says, Jesus forgives us our sins and makes us worthy, worthy of eternal life, the gift of eternal life. And so never forget, if you fall away, never forget, even if you come to the last moment, God is ready to forgive you. God is ready to completely forgive you if we just turn to him and trust, as Jesus said, in my mercy.